Geometry Unit 3, Lesson 4, Conditions for Rectangles, Rhombuses, and Squares. So we want to know what conditions prove that some quadrilateral is a rectangle, a rhombus, or square, and then we'll prove if a parallelogram is one of those. So one of the things that's to know is that all of the theorems that we're going to do, you have to have that it's a parallelogram first, and then the conditions will apply. So if you can't show it's a parallelogram, you won't be able to show that it's a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. So which two things guarantee that a parallelogram is a rectangle is if it has one right angle or if it has congruent diagonals. Again, it has to be for parallelogram first, so we'll first have to show that something is a parallelogram, and then if it has one at right angle, it will be a rectangle. We have to first show something's a parallelogram, and then if we can show the diagonals are congruent, it will be a rectangle. So let's prove that right angle condition. It says ABCD is a parallelogram, that's required, and we have one right angle, and now we want to prove that that's a rectangle. So since it's a parallelogram, we know that opposite angles are, so we know that they're congruent. Angle A and angle C are opposite angles. Angle A is a right angle, so Angle C also has to be a right angle because we know that they're congruent. Consecutive angles in a parallelogram are, we know those are supplementary. And one of two supplementary angles is a right angle, then what do we know? then both of them are right angles. So you can't have two of them be supplementary and one's a right in there because 90 plus 90 is 180. So now angle A and B are consecutive angles. We know that A is a right angle and we just show that if they're supplementary and consecutive, they have to be right angles here. So angle B will also be a right angle. And the same is true for A and D. They're both consecutive, and in here that means they're supplementary, and because of that, it's going to be a right angle. So angle D will also be a right angle. And now we've shown that all four of them are right angles, so ABCD must be a rectangle by definition, since it has four right angles. All right, now let's show that having the diagonals congruent for a parallelogram is enough to show that it's a rectangle. So it says because of something, AB is congruent to CD. So why would we know opposite sides? Well, again, we're looking at what's given. Well, that's because it's a parallelogram. Because ABCD is a parallelogram, these diagonals or the, uh, sorry, the opposite sides are congruent. It is given that the diagonals are congruent. And then it says something by the reflexive property of congruence. So let's think about what are we trying to show. So we're going to use some triangle congruence theorem. And we have, this is true, and we have this whole diagonal is congruent to this whole diagonal. So if you look, which triangle is this in? That's in this triangle, and this is in this triangle. So what would we want to show by the reflexive property to be able to show that certain triangles are congruent? Well, if you look, the side which is in common is AD. So that common side is what we want to say is congruent by the reflexive property and congruent. So now we have that third side, and since we have three sides, it is the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. And then what are the triangles that are congruent? They're triangle BAD, and B will match C, that will be triangle CDA. And now by corresponding parts, well, what would we like to show? We want to show it's a rectangle, so we're trying to show something about these angles here in order to show that it's a rectangle. So what would the corresponding parts be? We're going to look at these angles here. So angle BAD is now congruent to angle CDA. 
but these angles are, what are they? Well, we don't know the right angles yet, but what do we know? We, we know it's a parallelogram, so what do we know about those? We know these are supplementary because they're same side angles and these happen to be parallel to each other. And therefore, because they're supplementary, their measures have to add to 180. And then by substitution, because we know that these two angles are congruent, instead of this one, we can put the measure of this one again. And then that gives us two of those as 180, or if we divide by two, we get 90. And a similar argument, you could do the same sort of thing for the other angles and show that these are also right angles and therefore it is a right triangle. Or you could now use this theorem because you've shown that there's one right angle, you know that is a rectangle. So we could have just used the right angle condition there and shown that that is a, now a rectangle. All right, so now let's look. Here we're going to have an example of using these, and we want to know, do we have enough information to show that the quadrilateral that's, so they're both going to relate to this picture. Is this enough information to say that that's a rectangle? Remember, first of all, we have to be able to show that something is a parallelogram. So it tells us that EF and GH are congruent, and FG and G or sorry, EH are congruent. So these two together, this implies it's a parallelogram by the, what condition would that be? Or if you like, that is the opposite side, uh, congruent opposite side theorem. We now know that's a parallelogram. That's the congruent opposite sides. And now we know that F, H, and G, E are congruent. So is that enough? This will now imply that that's a rectangle. And this is by the congruent diagonal condition. All right. So now ignore my markings. We have different things. Suppose that we have F, E, G is 45 and then GEH is 50, and you could automatically say, well, if we add those, that means that that corner angle, the measure of that corner angle FEH is now 95, which is not 90 degrees, so it's not a, re um, so it's not a rectangle. And besides that, there's nothing here to show that this is even going to be a rect uh, parallelogram. So you could say also there are no, no, not enough information to show it's a parallelogram. So there's no condition that we would have that would show that that was a rectangle. All right, so for a rectangle, again, the two conditions are congruent diagonals or one right angle. What is it for a rhombus? You can have two consecutive sides that are conditioned. That will show it's a rhombus. Again, it requires it's a parallelogram, all three of these. You can show that the diagonals are perpendicular, or you can show that one diagonal bisects the opposite angles. Any one of those three will give us a rhombus. Again, they're one pair of consecutive sides are congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular, or one diagonal bisects the opposite angles. We're going to prove the diagonal bisecting opposite sides condition. So we have ABCD as a parallelogram and we have BCA is congruent to DCA. So we know that this one is congruent to this one. And we have BAC is congruent to DAC. So we're given that this is congruent to this. So we have Gibbons marked here and here. This one is ABCD is a parallelogram. Here we have this one, and then this other one must be this. So we have angle BAC is congruent to angle DAC. And then we have AC is congruent to AC, and that would be by the reflexive property, if you've said so, of congruence. 
And now those three things by the angle side angle triangle congruence theorem are going to tell us which two triangles are now congruent. We have this angle, this, ang this angle, this side, this angle, and this angle, this side, and this angle. So this would be triangle. We have BAC. And B is matching D, A is matching A, and C is matching C. So this is angle DAC by the triangle congruence theorem. Because of that, we can say two different things. What are they? BC is now congruent to DC. That's by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And what would be congruent with AD? That would be AB. That's also by corresponding parts. So now we have BC is congruent to DC. And we have AB is congruent to AD. But we also know that DC is congruent to BA. So if we combine all three of those together, we have that all four of those are congruent. And now what does that mean? It means that ABCD is a rhombus because we have all four sides are congruent, which is just the, yes, that's the definition of a rhombus, that all four sides are congruent. We don't need to use one of the conditions there. That is simply the definition of a rhombus. All right, now how can we guarantee that something is a square? You're going to have to show that it not only meets one condition for a rectangle, you also have to show that it meets a condition for a rhombus. Also, again, like for both of them, that means you have to first be able to show or guarantee that it's a parallelogram. So we're both going to refer to this picture. We have AB is congruent to CD, and we have BC is congruent to DA. What are that, those two going to show? So we'll write those. Those first two, AP is, AB is congruent to CD, and we have BC is congruent to DA. These imp imply that it's a parallelogram, and that would be by the opposite, congruent opposite sides theorem. All right, and then we have AD is perpendicular to DC, so there is a right angle there. What does that show? AB, sorry, AD perpendicular to DC means that D is a right angle. which implies that ABCD is a rectangle using what? That is the right angle condition. And finally, we have that AC is perpendicular to BD. That says AC, that this here is also a right angle, and this implies that ABCD is a rhombus, And that is by the perpendicular diagonal condition. And finally, because I won't write it here, but because you would have to write now, because it's both a rhombus and a rectangle, that means that it is a square. So we can show it's a square. All right, what if we're given that AB is congruent to BC? Can we show that that's a rhombus? So only knowing that. And the answer is we cannot conclude that. So even though we have a consecutive pair congruent, it doesn't show it because we cannot say it's a rhombus. I mean, uh, we, because we don't know it's a parallelogram. Again, that's a thing you have to show first is that something is a parallelogram. If you can't do that, it doesn't matter about any one of those conditions. It's not enough to show what we want. 
In fact, what could this be by having two consecutive? Again, that could be a kite. These could be congruent, and these could be congruent, and they could be two different lengths that could be a kite. Again, kites aren't parallelograms, so having two consecutive sides congruent is not enough unless you know it's a parallelogram.